if you're watching this now, you are seeing us on our replay, which means you've gone to louisvilleanswers.com or you've just happened by it by chance. <laughs> by chance. This is, this is the good stuff right here. What are you eating? Oh, this right here. This is the real stuff. Yeah, this is the pre show banter. Right. Yeah. Here, where the pan. Uh, we got banter. Brad is drinking tea. Chuck, what are yeah. you eating? Are you eating anything? No, um, I just, uh, we've been closing all day long. I've oh. been grabbing a piece of pizza while cleaning the room. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Yeah. We'll give, we'll, we'll give Greg two minutes and then we'll roll him. Did you clean and then eat, Chuck? <laughs> eat and then clean? Okay. No. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> As you're cleaning. <laughs> we got a lot of shit to go over. Just, oh, if you're watching, yeah. we do use foul language on the off show. Um, and Chuck, there's a couple of things. I don't know if you heard about this. We're going to get to this. Um, condo association in Miami sues to evict a maskless tenant. Ooh. I'm wondering hmm. from a legal aspect, if you have any, yeah. legal, you know? I, I can't comment on, on Florida law, but that sure. sounds pretty specious to me. Could it happen here is what I guess what I'm going for. Um, yeah. yeah. Think about it. Don't worry about it. We'll get to it in a bit. Yeah. We'll think about it. All right. So, Greg, <sighs> he texted me saying he's pulling in whatever he went to get. He certainly went a long way to get it. Pulling in the neighborhood and I'll be on five. Okay. That was a 252. All right. We're going to start and he can jump in as he so chooses. Because of hit speak of the devil. There he is, Greg Greg. And he appears. So there we go. Right on time. Or thereabouts. What'd you get to, for lunch? We're all wondering. Greg, I can't hear us yet. Thought I'm getting audio set. So I'm, oh, yeah. I'm told that uh, the guy that used to cook at John E's is now uh, showing up on Wednesdays at, uh, oh, What's the name of the meat place there on Taylorsville Road, right next to Bowman Field? Uh, no, not Le Relay. Yeah, not yeah. Le Relay. It's next no, door it's to the it. Butcher shop. Uh, there, Kingsley's. Yeah. Kingsley. Right? Oh, Kingsley's, Kingsley's meats. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. No. So he's there uh, today. He's making the Johnny's fried chicken and burger. Okay, for those of you watching, this was recorded on Wednesday. Okay, let's get ready to roll. Here we go. Stand by, everybody. In three, two, one. Good Sunday morning, Bob Sekoler, the Louisville Real Estate Show here with you for the next 30 minutes or so. Hope you're having a good Sunday with us here in, well, from their homes or offices. We're still doing COVID shows. We've got Chuck Crosby, the Crosby Law Offices at 499-6360. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Also, Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service. They hire vets. They're the number one home team inspection service in the country. They have a... They have the old number, but they're also promoting Brad is uh, sporting a new number, 844-411-TEAM. That's 844-411-TEAM. Nice. Nice. Hey, thank you. There you go. We, we, we like that number. It's all about information and education here. 411-TEAM, but remember the 844 before. That's right. The 411-TEAM. <laughs> and then my son, Greg, who, of course, does our marketing, photography, and so much more. Howdy, howdy. And, of course, you can reach me because we are still looking to – List and sell homes, 15 buyer agents. You can call me anytime, 376-5483. That's Bob Sekolder. All right, folks, so let's start it off. Um, they did it again. Mortgage rates, again, another record low. Uh, just as some housing experts were predicting rates couldn't get any lower, they did. Yes, they did. Averaging all-time low, new low of eight, 2.86, which is incredible. So just FYI, the market will continue to be driven by low interest rates, but also by the lack of homes on the market, which brings us to our next little incident. And anybody wants to talk here, just jump on board. Home buyer traffic is on the rise. Now, what we see, the way this goes is I see it because we're dealing with buyers who are coming to our We Sell Louisville, uh, the Socola team at REMAX Properties East. Greg sees it because he is constantly getting 
uh, reports from us to go out, shoot, list, and then mm -hmm. property sell. Our 15 plus agents constantly on me. On you. Then Good things. Br Brad sees it because then those buyers are calling for inspections. How did your this past week or so go for inspections, Brad? The week of Labor Day, the four-day week for us was even bigger than the week before, which was a record week. So okay. it just, it's, it stayed steady. It's been, been strong. And then you missed this because you probably didn't get a chance to hear or watch Chuck Crosby's comments prior to us going on the air. If, by the way, you want to see them, you can go to LouisvilleAnswers.com. That's LouisvilleAnswers.com. That'll redirect you to our YouTube feed of this show. But Chuck, you were saying you're so busy, you don't have a chance to eat, but you're cleaning in between closings and trying to yeah. down some food at the same time. Yeah, that's about it. Well, that, that's enough right there. Yeah, yeah. You, you're trying to keep up with everything, so that's good. Lawrence Yum, chief economist with the National Association of Realtors is now forecasting that more homes, listen carefully, more homes, will sell this year than last year. He's also predicting home sales to increase by eight to 12% next year. This is a bulletin. We kind of buried it in the first five minutes of the show, but this is a bulletin that if this prediction comes true, an increase of eight to 12%, Chuck won't even have a, have a chance to eat the whole day. That will be a yes. problem for Chuck, yep. And there's strong evidence now that uh, Lawrence, you know, again, he's with the uh, National Association of Realtors, that he'll be right. Showing time that we use, our Socola team uses, it's a leading showing software. All of our sellers know about it. And a market stat service provider for residential real estate industry just reported on their latest showing time index that home buyer traffic jumped again in July. There's a bit of a lag there. July, or some like to say July, recording uh, a 60.7% year-over-year increase in nationwide showing activity. Incredible. That means there are 60% wow. more buyers setting appointments to see homes than were at the same time last year. The number of potential purchasers was also up dramatically in every region of the country. So they're saying that this curve with the uh, res re responding and rebounding, if you remember the beginning of the pandemic, we were worried, is it going to be a W? Is it a U? Greg, you were, you were leaning towards a Nike swish, if I remember correctly. More of a check, more of a Nike check. Check. Well, now they're saying it looks like a V. So that's good, unless we see things fall apart. And that could always happen. <laughs> Think about it. If you extended the other part of the Nike check, it's kind of, it would make a V, you know, Maybe. just okay. covering my grounds and hedging my bets there. Yeah, we all on the same page here, Brad, Chuck. We're looking yeah. at these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least I, think, I am. I think the concern for, uh, for me, from my standpoint, is that 8 to 12% increase next year means we've got to find more homes to sell. Um, yeah, there, pessimist me. You know, you've got, we, we talk about the new constructions, building permits, um, big neighborhood here. Uh, Norton Commons getting ready to undo their Oldham County section. Important to note, they're doing, you know, 250 some odd lots, but they're only allowed 40 build 40 building permits a year. Um, so the county is restricting them or whatever the deal was. Oh, I so know we why. May see, well, I know, it's, I know, it's for I know schools, why. basically, right. so you don't exactly. overcrowd and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you're going to see a lot more of that as far as being a restricted, a restrictive piece to everywhere because, and I preach this on here all the time, why are, why are we seeing all this activity? Well, I truly believe uh, that people are moving from the big cities to places like Louisville, Colorado, Austin, Texas. Everyone's getting out of the way of, of global warming if it's, you know, possible issues with hurricanes. We're seeing one of the most active hurricane seasons we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's driving a lot of those pieces. Building prices are still up. So we might see a, a bog, but which may be good if we just have nice, long, sustained growth in some of these cities like Louisville. They can't say the all same right. for New York and, you know. I'm going to get to this. I want you to get your opinions on this. First, a reminder, eight cleaning products that professionals swear by in these COVID times. Chuck and Brad may be able to uh, come up with their own stuff that they like to use. Also, remember that if you want to see what the sellers are saying about us, go to LouisvilleSellersTalk.com or LouisvilleZillow.com to read. So we're talking about how we're going to find more listings. What are we going to do building? We talked in the past couple of weeks, guys, 
that construction costs are up, wood supply costs up. Well, there's a new stylish trend. You ready? Containers, mm -hmm. shipping containers. You I knew heard you were going to say it. Yep. Yeah. Modern shipping container homes are popular due to their versatility and affordability. Despite having a pre-made shape, containers can be stacked in a lot of different ways to produce unusual forms for modern dwellings. And thanks to their low price, by the way, they're about 2000 per container. They can be used to produce not only modern houses and retreats for less, but also used in the construction of low-income housing. There's a guy who they this article uh, references who has a 4,000 square foot home. Mm -hmm. A 4,000 square foot container home? Yeah. 4,000 square feet, so which is not that big. They're, they're it's, and for by side moral by side standards. Stacked. Yeah. I wonder, yeah. Brad, what, what do you well, think the- We're uh, just catching up with, with Jamaica. Uh, in Jamaica, you see these homes all over yeah. the place. Mm -hmm. Well, well and I mean, for years. <clears throat> I mean, there, it was just announced not two weeks ago that there's going to be a container home developed, a, a group of homes down in Nulu, you know, that's, that's taking mm -hmm. up about half a city block. So they're coming. A friend of mine just opened a hydroponic farm in Clifton in a container. So, mm -hmm. I mean, certainly, you know, it's, it's something that's very durable. I mean, in Colorado very, and um, Austin, Texas, when you, some of the main streets for commerce, they've got storefronts that, you know, they cut out big, huge pieces of glass yeah. and put doors in the front of the container and, you know, you set it up, knock it out. It's pretty cool, but, you know. The aesthetics you, are a little different. But don't you have to worry about hyd with the hydroponic farm rusting of the containers? No, because they're lining all the insides of them. So. Yeah, they're spraying yeah. those down with. Yeah. Coatings. Interesting. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's a it, it's an interesting building uh, proposition. I mean, the veterans camp that's that's uh, going just south of town. Those are all containers that are being used there. It's a great that, idea. Uh, that housing complex. Two grand. What is, what's the size of a container? This guy has a four thousand square foot the, house. The ocean going ones are about forty feet long by about nine and a half feet wide, and so, they have an interior t height of about a hundred and eight inches. So just a little under um, uh, 400 square feet. Mm -hmm. So Perfect. that's not bad. That, yeah. you, add, you put 10 of those together, you got pretty nice yeah. digs. Yeah. Uh, earlier this year, Realtor.com announced the release of the Housing Recovery Index. Did anybody hear that before now? Housing Recovery Index. It's a weekly guide showing how uh, the pandemic has impacted the residential real estate market. There are four key components, housing demand, home price, housing supply, pace of sales. And the index compares the current status to the January 2020 market trend as a baseline for pre-COVID market growth. The real estate market started out strong in early 2020, but of course we all know that uh, momentum dropped dramatically. Uh, beginning of March when the pandemic paused the economy, it also shows that the strength of the recovery since the beginning of May um, is incredible. Today, the index stands at its highest point all year, including the time prior to the economic shutdown. So a lot of strong pent-up demand. We may see more of those container um, subdivisions coming into play. Something I wanted to check with, and I don't know Chuck can comment um, on this with regards to it happening in Florida, because I know you're not licensed there, but a Miami real estate professional is possibly facing eviction from a condo tower where he rents a unit in downtown Miami after allegedly appearing without a mask in common areas, which violates local face mask mandates. So Chuck, here in Kentucky, we've got a governor who has asked everyone to wear a mask when they're outdoors. And then when you go into a restaurant, uh, take it off at the table. Um, is there the possibility that someone listening to us who refuses to wear a mask could be um, facing a problem um, <clears throat> out of a residential property, I cannot imagine how you would how you would frame that. Especially if you know, it to be evicted, it's a lease. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, it means you don't own the place; you're a tenant. If the lease didn't contain that, and you're not in violation of the lease, you're going to have to pull that clause out of it that says, "Oh, you're not going to do anything illegal." But 
I really don't see a judge doing that. Now, there could be fines uh, if, if you mm-hmm. own the property. Let's say it's an HOA, a condo, or something like that, and you're doing something in a common area. I can imagine fines being levied for uh, unsafe activity, uh, but uh, I, I don't see that going to the point that someone would be dispossessed. What about um, tickets here in Louisville? Can are we? Uh, can someone ticket us as we're – yeah, outside without a mask at this point? Are you following what the knowledge, governor Bashir? No. no. no could that that could happen. Uh, the governor is obviously the uh, um, executive branch in charge of policing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, I can see a situation where a person could be cited for violating, violating a legitimate order done under his authority. Um, and you're not going to, you're not going to take that to the Supreme court. Uh, so mm-hmm. my bet is it would be something that would, could be effective. Um, I haven't heard wh- whether or not the uh, uh, Kentucky Supreme Court's ruled on the uh, lawsuit with uh, um, the AG or not, but uh, uh, that could have some effect on it once that decision comes down. Tell you what we'll do. Let's take a break. When we come back, uh, the cleaning products, also some um, a new concept for, we talked about housing, what about for offices, and then some other problems that we're seeing some people face. We will take a break here in the uh, in well, on the air with us from their individual locations. Chuck Crosby, the Crosby Law Offices at four nine nine six three six zero. Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service, his new number eight four 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 one one team. That's eight four 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 one one team. My son Greg does our marketing and photography. My, you can reach me anytime, anytime, day or night. Uh, we're looking to list homes, and we've got buyer agents as well that can help you. Three seven six. Five four eight three three seven six five four eight three. If you want to see what people are saying about us, go to LouisvilleSellersTalk.com or go to LouisvilleZillow.com. We're back in a moment on News Radio eight forty WHAS. Hey Chuck, adjust your your microphone. It's rubbing on the collar. Of oh, is it? Sorry, yeah, just keep an eye that on one right there. there. Yeah, you got that part of it. That's it. Now yeah, we're good. All right, let's go back. News Radio 840 WHAS, the Louisville Real Estate Show. Bob Sekoler here with you. Thank you, Barbara Corcoran. And we love Barbara, and she knows if she's coming to town, we want to see her as well as if she needs to buy something, she's contacting us. You can uh, reach me anytime as well, 376-5483. Also here with us uh, from their respective studios, Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service, 844-411-TEAM. Chuck Crosby, the Crosby Law Offices, his number, they do great closings, and he's also an incredible chef, 499-6360. My son, Greg, does our marketing and photography and so much more. Uh, Condo Association, we talked about the suing to evict maskless tenant. We got to keep an eye on that. Uh, Co-working, there's a bet going on that we may see more people moving their office outside at least during nicer weather, which I was thinking about this. Some of us have to stay inside. I know, Brad, you got to do inspections inside. But, Chuck, Mm -hmm. could you not set up a a picnic table or something outside and do outside closings? Closings al fresco. Bring on the margaritas. There you go. That would be nice. You could do that. It's a possibility. We were talking, I mentioned earlier, there are uh, cleaning professionals who swear by some unique products. Some of these you may have heard of. Some may be... Um, new to you, especially in these COVID times, I figured this is a perfect opportunity because Chuck does a lot of his own stuff. In fact, that you heard earlier in the show, he was busy cleaning between closings, as he does on a regular basis. But uh, a good all-purpose cleaner to uh, start with reduces uh, the number of cleaning products that you have to use. Now, Molly Maid was sur- surveyed, and they came up with the Mr. Clean all-purpose cleaner. Has anybody seen that, bought that, used that at all? No. No? I, 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 know, I know of it, but don't use it. Yeah, one of those ones that smells rife of chemicals. Well, Delicious. I know you're on the anti-chemical kick, uh, but mm. they say it's effective and safe to use on almost all household surfaces. Uh, it's scented with Febreze and doesn't leave a strong chemical odor. Um, but mind you, never use a, uh, a product like a Mr. Clean or even um, Windex 
on your computer monitors or TV monitors. Uh, anything with glass that has electricity running through it, you could do more damage than, than uh, good in cleaning it. There's actual um, cleaner that they make. I've got one, in fact, I'm holding in my hand. It's called ScreenMon, S-C-R-E-E-N-M-O-N. -E and it's a natural screen cleaner, odor-free, streak-free, ammonia-free, alcohol-free, phosphates free and anti-static so there you go they, and you can get a uh, probably not kill any germs but it'll make that screen crystal well it'll make clear. the screen clear so that's that's the important thing next you want to think about microfiber cloths which mary maids uh, the maids made pro countless other cleaning services agree that microfiber cloths are a must have for any cleaning arsenal my problem and chuck i have to believe you've used these microfiber cloths before yeah, yeah. yep does anybody, when you use them, does it, the, the fibers, do the open end click, cling to your fingers at all for, maybe it's just me. All right, it's just me. I never noticed that. Yeah. Next time you use it, see if it, it happens to me. But the small fibers are more effective at grabbing not only my fingers, but dust, dirt, and other cloths. Plus, they're cleaner than sponges and more sustainable than um, paper towels. Something else you want to consider using, and again, this I think is important, white vinegar. You don't always need strong chemicals to disinfect mm -hmm. and clean. Uh, germaphobes, like Greg, have Use a, a lot of that in our house. White vinegar seems to do the job. Again, I refer to Chuck and Brad, either of you two yep. use. So uh, my parents have a 20-year-old tile floor in yep. uh, Florida, and it has never seen anything other than white vinegar and water, and it looks as new as the day it was installed. Does that include the grout between the tiles? The grout, so, the grout too. So we've got grout in my house and it looks like it's uh, been there a while. I mean, there's some dirt. Mm -hmm. Could I use white vinegar yeah. to freshen it up? Mm -hmm. You probably can, yes. Hmm. All right. That Why not? Sense. Well, you don't I'm need just, all these strong, powerful. Yeah, I know that, but I'm just saying that might be worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's you a know, whole other podcast. We go, well, we go into a listing. I go in and I'm, I always see these little things here and there, and you want to suggest, like, um, um, you can get a, a white eraser. The, uh, magic you eraser. Get, magic eraser. You've got to be careful with those uncertain paint types. If you scrub too hard, there's, yeah. they're not made to be – it literally is removing layers of the paint. Baking soda also is a, uh, another must-have cleaner. Uh, I know you put it in your refrigerator, but I didn't know that we could – I guess this could be used like Ajax or something like that. You know? Better than Ajax. Yeah, and people also put a little bit of it in the garbage disposal, add some uh, vinegar to it, have your chemistry uh, fizz inside of it, flush it all out, and it's pretty Sprinkle effective. A little, squirt a little lemon in there when you lemon. do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll make it smell fresh, then throw the mm -hmm. lemon in there. Molly yeah. made. Oh, yeah. Molly made you throw the whole lemon in? Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, why not? Okay, so. I, I'm the only, I thought I was the only one that did Don't that. Don't do eggshells. Oh, no. no eggshells, but a lemon. That, that, Wait, why not eggshells? Why well, not eggshells? Don't put eggshells egg, in garbage disposal. Clog egg, it. Eggshells takes a lot of water to flush it through, and yeah. and having my daughter just clogged ours not uh, two months ago with about a dozen eggs while making mm -hmm. a baked delight. So oh, lots I was of at water a to run with somebody, and they were throwing eggshells down. I was like, no, 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 don't do that. And then yeah. like twenty minutes later, they're like, the sink's backed up. Like, yeah, know. lots of water. So, all right. So um, Molly Maid also takes the. Um, the um, powder and puts it on carpet, uses it as carpet cleaner, as a baking soda. So, all right, so here's something also tub and, uh, here I was talking about this tub and tile cleaner, all purpose cleaners and white vinegars are excellent for cleaning most any surface in the bathroom. But if you wanna save yourself from stretching and reaching involving the cleaning of a tub and shower, then consider using a product like scrubbing bubbles. Now that seems more caustic. I, I've used it, I don't know that it has helped, but. Uh, again, maid services use that as well. Glass and surface cleaner when it comes to it, mirrors, windows, classic white vinegar or classic uh, of another sort, Windex, uh, of course. A versatile vacuum. This seems to be the, do all of us have the portable vacuums in addition to the electric plug-in ones that are the higher end vacuums? Look, no, I'm not getting. I, I no. yeah, I don't have the cordless ones. I got it. I got it. And it works a little bit, but not as much as the plug-in one. Mm -hmm. you, if you're going to buy one, I'd get one with a, a HEPA filter. You've got rubber, lots of dog hair. Yeah, I do have a lot of dog <laughs> hair, man. Um, don't overlook the importance of rubber gloves. Another suggestion. So those are some of the things that are uh, 
in need. There's a really good brand called um, Method. Uh, you can find it at Kroger, I believe. It's it's low caustic, uh, not very many chemicals, very safe to use around kids, pets, all that kind of good stuff. We're, you know, kind of a freak about that kind of stuff. It's just uh, helpful for the environment, and you know. And they make oh. a great granite cleaner and a great mm -hmm. stainless steel cleaner. Yes, they do. Method. Yeah, good floor cleaner too for uh, hardwoods. Uh, uh, some information for you coming up next week on our show. We're going to talk about 10 ways your yard is actually inviting burglars to break into your house when and we are not, you're not homeless. Like animal well, burglars or like? No, no, no real, real burglars. burglars. Yeah, the real ones. Um, sinking, sagging, other signs your home is serious foundation issues. I know we visit and I see a lot of situations where there are uh, folks who want to sell their home, but they've got certain things that are a bit askew. Uh, by that, I mean um, different things happening to the house. Brad, for your, from your side of this, if you notice your floor seems to be uneven, what mm -hmm. could that be a sign of? So uneven floors, you could potentially have uh, broken floor joists. Uh, you can have a foundation that is, uh, is sinking on one side. Uh, you could have sill plates that have gotten wet and uh, have been compressed and have dropped. Um, quite a few reasons. We see a lot of, uh, surprisingly, we see a lot of uh, cracked and broken floor joists that are causing the uneven floors like that. So let's take that to Chuck, who just passed a couple of years. You, it was a condo that you, you bought and moved into, going, yeah, correct? It's a yeah. condo, but it looks more like a townhome. What would you suggest then? And, and I'm suspecting you, I, I know you had Brett and home team out there to inspect it. I did. But um, had they found a problem or did you as an attorney research if there was a problem that either was obvious when you were buying it or occurred in the following years is there a situation where the condo association homeowner association would be responsible for it or do you as an attorney take an extra step to look to see who might be responsible if something does pop up like a sagging floor down the road after you purchase well, if you're talking about a condo, um, typically, uh, uh, you know, Brad and his crew is going to look for, for anything that's wrong. And, and when they find something, uh, in the typical sense, uh, you ask for the repair, uh, the seller's agent's going to say, oh, well, that's a condo issue, if it is indeed. But most of the time, you're just looking on the inside, Brad, and, and mm -hmm. generally the inside of a unit is going to be, uh, isn't going to be a common area or, uh, or a community uh uh, uh, area. So, uh, it's not going to be, uh, an HOA thing. Now, if the roof was sagging, oh, well, that would be, yeah. uh, but, uh, limited common areas, uh, generally it's going to be the, the owner of the property and, and certainly the, the insides are, are generally anything that's for use for one unit, uh, is typically how they roll out. But you look at the master deed, you look at the bylaw to see what, what's part of it. Because some condo associations will include repairs yeah. to the windows and doors yeah. and some won't. Right. Uh, and every, every condo is going to be similar, but, you know, similar means they're not the same. Uh, there are some condos out there uh, that I've seen that will, that will be responsible all the way in uh, to uh, the first coat of paint. Uh, there's one that actually will pick up certain, uh, uh, of the uh, sinks and things like that, but most of them are to the drywall. So anything drywall out is going to be your responsibility. Now, if it's if uh, let's say the roof leaks and that's a condo association issue, well, they might uh, be on the hook for damage that comes from that. Mm -hmm. So if you know if the roof leaks and it destroys part of my drywall, they might have to you know put it back and and maybe put it one coat of paint up. But, what about uh, what about your basement? If the basement leaks, uh, generally a basement is going to be uh, the unit. Now, like I said, they're they're different in all the condos, but in in mine, uh, if my basement leaks, that's my ticket. You're you're on the hook for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess if anyone's thinking about buying a condo, there are a certain set of rules to be concerned about, think about as you move forward. Um, and certainly we'll talk about them on a regular basis on the show, but I think knowing what you're responsible for, as, as Chuck has pointed out, as opposed to what the condo association is responsible for, 
is certainly a step in the right direction yeah. to know what your the ramifications are because that, yeah, that could but be anything that serves the ind the individual is probably not going to be condo say that again anything that that serves the individual for instance um, pipes uh, sure the condo is going to be responsible for the water pipes out in the yard but yeah. once those pipes separate and start coming off to my unit alone well that's me that's you got it all right, we are out of time. Our uh, th this went pretty quick. Uh, th thanks to Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service, 844-411-TEAM. That's 844-411-TEAM. Also, Chuck Crosby, the Crosby Law Offices, at 499-6360. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah. Also, Son Greg does our marketing, our photography, and so much more. And then you can reach me anytime at uh, 376-5483. And you can see what people are saying about us by going to LouisvilleSellersTalk.com or LouisvilleZillow.com. We're out of time. See you next Sunday on News see you Radio. Later. Eight. Yep, take care. See you next Sunday, News Radio 840 WHAS. All right. Well, that that just seemed to go way too fast. Did you all get yeah. that impression? Or that was I a did. blink. Yeah, oh. that was quick. If you guys haven't tried Let's, these yet, if you like what all are those, those, oh, those look good. They're from Costco. They are phenomenal. Hmm. What are you know, they? that's phenomenal. I, I get my almonds from Costco generally. The uh, Marcona almonds are just. Oh yeah. I love those. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't miss. Just, just try, try them. That. I what can't was that? explain. Olive oil and garlic. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. about as good as it gets. They're addictive. I, I'm addicted to the uh, the smoked uh, uh, almonds from Trader Joe's. Those, Those are oh yeah, love love I love my next my my mixed nuts from Trader Joe's. I'd be very careful when I said that. <laughs> yes, I love my that. yes, delicious. So. But yes, these are can't misses. All right, guys, All right. thank you. We'll Take see you care. later. All right. Chuck's busy. We'll see you next week, guys. Take care. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Yep. Thank you. Bye bye.